Over the past several months, you guys have been messaging me on Facebook, sending me tweets, leaving comments on my most recent YouTube rig video. You've been shooting me emails. Pretty much any way you can get in touch with me, you have been, and so many of you have that I decided to finally make a video for this. And this is the Radial Hotshot ABO microphone router that I modified. You guys wanted to know a little bit more about what I did to it, how I did it. It's really straightforward. Um, it's bulletproof. It weighs probably like five pounds. You could probably drive a truck over it and it'll still work. But it didn't do everything I wanted out of the box. And the one thing in particular, because I use this to route my looping microphone, is it didn't tell me which path I was routing the microphone to. Uh, you have two outputs, one input. Uh, you do not want to use phantom power or you know, condenser mic with this kind of thing. You're going to get pops and all kinds of problems. So I'm using a SM58 with a switch on it so I can kill it whenever I need to. And then it routes out to two places. Never knew which way it was going. I needed to add an LED, an indicator. This video is going to go into kind of superficial detail on how I did it. I'm assuming that you have a small background in soldering and how circuits work, but I will explain it. Here we go. All right, so the ABO is on my workbench and we're gonna take it apart. It's really easy to do that. There are four screws on the back. You just need an Allen wrench. What size? I have no idea. Try a few different ones. It's somewhere around two millimeters or three thirty seconds of an inch. Once we've got it open, you can see the 2.1 millimeter DC panel jack that I've added for power and that everything inside is directly mounted to the PCB. To make this work, you need to remove the existing two-pull stomp switch and replace it with a three-pull. The existing switch lets you send two signals to two places, those are the outputs, and you need an extra pull to connect or disconnect the power from the DC jack to the LED when you've routed the mic signal to one of those two outputs. This is working the same way essentially that any true bypass pedals LED works. From what I could tell with a multimeter, just checking continuity, the existing switch only routes XLR pins 2 and 3, leaving the ground connected the entire time. Check your work as you go, and don't hold the soldering iron on the circuit for very long while you desolder. You don't want to burn the whole thing up. It's definitely worth mentioning regarding the XLR jacks that on the PCB, they are mirrors of one another. So the leftmost pin on the input side is not going to be the leftmost pin on the output side. If you solder those two pins together, it ain't gonna work. In conjunction with my soldering pencil, I use one of these to desolder. Don't. They're terrible. Spend a couple more bucks, get one of these things. It's a soldering pencil with a built-in hand-operated desoldering pump. If you own a motorized desoldering gun, I can't think of any reason why you'd be watching this video. You've barely got any space to work with on the top side of the PCB, as you can see, so I suggest running the wires to the bottom or the back of the PCB and soldering to those contact points. That'll buy you an extra eighth of an inch or so of clearance for your new stomp switch to fit. You also have barely anywhere to mount the power jack, so measure at least twice and drill once. I ended up mounting the jack just a little bit below the switch's horizontal axis and a little bit above the center point on the side of the enclosure. Uh, you really don't have much cubic space to work with anywhere else. Heat shrink and hot glue are going to be your best friends here. Make sure to use enough of it. Don't overdo it because, again, space is at a premium here. After you're all done soldering everything together, make sure that everything works, obviously, and then put it together, and good luck with that, because it is a pain to put this thing back together once you get that jack mounted on the side. If you haven't seen the video from my new rig, which has already been revised and redone since the most recent video, you can watch that video by clicking right here. And you can also watch the video of my old rigs rundown, uh, which should be pretty indicative of why I went in such a streamlined and simplified direction. So did I have fun modifying this? Kinda. Uh, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't look forward to it. It was a real chore figuring out where to put any additional components because it's the truest form of form being dictated by function. And they didn't leave any more space in this than they needed to because they didn't need to. It was built to do a job, it does that job. If you wanted to do anything beyond that, you've gotta get creative. So, a lot of space management, and there were a lot of mock-ups that I made before I finally executed this because if I had drilled the hole in this thing to mount this power jack, 
and it turned out that the jack didn't fit, then I just have a hole in the side of this chassis, which wouldn't really work out. I hope this video was helpful for you. If uh, it was, like it, share it, leave me a comment. If you have questions, leave me a comment on here as well. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, do that. I got a bunch of new videos coming really soon, and you'll be seeing this thing in action. Cheers. Mm-hmm.